here we have a white, a classic 5200, full Tegra postal bike. Look at this gym. Is it really a gym? Is it a diamond in the rough? It looks pretty rough. But let's dive into this and see what all entails to get this thing up to speed and ready for its next owner. Is it a diamond or not after this? Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. Taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin the guy on this old bike series. Behind me is a classic gym. We need to give it some little bit of a intro as it should deserve back in the day in the 90s yes in the parker bikes days uh we carry trek and we are actually all affected every shop across the nation was affected by the u.s postals team with their leader lance armstrong winning multiple tour de france's you can't deny that he changed the cycling industry in that period of time i just you know it's one of those shameful things that you got caught later and whatever. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm just talking about the impact of these bikes and the people that are still collecting them today, even though, whatever, you know, it is what it is. And, but these bikes were really solid. They were several like third generation carbon OCLV, Optum Compact Low Void. Uh, this one was the 120 carbon frame where it has even up to today has a lot of parts that's still not not outdated i mean you can still get parts for them new and refurbish them or get them up to speed so without further ado let's pull this out and see what kind of gym we have here so back in the day the trek came out with the oclv a full carbon bonded frame made in the united states this is made in usa as well and uh want to really dive into the gym is it a a gym well if the car if the carbon frame isn't compromised and we'll see that after i get to detail first cleaning of it after i strip the parts i'll be at the end here to determine if it's you know at a glance pretty safe i did inspect it in the field when you should do when you're looking for all used bikes but i want to go a little bit of history on this first um you know shimano altegra this particular component tree the 6500 6510 series workhorse componentry it holds up really well you can refurbish it put it back together clean it uh, the brakes the whole bike came with that but this had a different wheel set than it was originally so i might consider a different wheel set i may have set aside maybe a shimano set i don't know we'll get to that at another point but i'm really going to be focusing on the frame and fork because as you know that is the most important bike to inspect to make sure um that you have a gym or not, because these little bits, they're a little bit lower lift, but if your frame and fork is compromised, especially the frame, you basically have a box of parts. So let's just kind of dive into this as I'll talk about the history and I'll kind of take this apart. The Trek OCLV, Optimum Compact Low Void, was one of those bikes that was introduced in the 90s and it started off with a one inch quill stem. This one is an inch and eight, so it does fit the standard headsets. So that's a good find there. In addition to this carbon was actually bonded together, pieced together, kind of following the suit of the old school bonded frames of Trek had of yesteryear. Um, same kind of thing, but they were really proud of their uh, kind of compact low void carbon, which are, these were all lugged and tubed, which was kind of cool um, back in the day. And there were several other manufacturers kind of following suit, but this particular guy, when they came out, it was a head spinner. And what was really intriguing is obviously it hit the road market first, and then they copied this tech into the mountain bike. So like the 9800 and uh, 9700 and 9900 models of that vintage were basically the mountain bike version cannon lever uh, with brake posts on there. Uh, so 
That being said, uh, they did trickle this uh, carbon OCV, OCLV uh, tech into their mountain bike line, which they were pretty light for the day um, because back then, other than the carbon fiber, it was titanium, and titanium was super expensive because the Russians had them. So it's one of those things where you really didn't get that. Um, very many tie bikes, and if you did, they had a pretty penny to them, even though the titanium material isn't that rare. It just was being only produced and manufactured, refined in, in the Soviet Union. So, you know, they had a little hard time. Nowadays, titanium kind of floods through the China portal, so in that case, it actually turns out to be pretty decent, one of those deals. So I'm going to take this chain off. The chain actually looks fairly new, but doesn't have a power link. So I'm looking for the master link on this guy. And then I was going to push it through. Yeah, and put a power link on it if it was still past inspection on this guy here. So we're going to push this pin through. And what I'm doing is trying to get to the frame so I can get a good cleaning inspect and see if we have a diamond here then then we'll have a follow-up recap but we want to get this chain off to be able to see and the cranks so forth part of the interruption there is more more you say push the more button push it push it I dare you to push it once you push that button you get more details about the video you are watching in addition to all the tools that I use in the shop as well as suggestion for improving your ride in addition to to help me provide advocacy in the cycling community also links to other social media accounts as well as my website to find the products that I actually sell and other insights in the industry other videos linked below extend your cycling experience here on YouTube and now back to your original programming well, Lance Armstrong, he was an individual, and there's a lot of articles and so forth, so I can be completely wrong, but how it influenced the bike shop and our perspective, it was pretty, pretty darn cool to get all jazzed up about road riding again after the mountain bike surge, right? So we were all kind of in the mountain bike window of, um, you know, that was the popular stuff. That was where a lot of the tech was heading, and Trek did a bold move of doing the road bike here. Um, well, that's where, when Lance Armstrong started winning, he was the first American to be on an American team to win the Tour de France. But prior to that was Lance Armstrong, which Lance Armstrong, or not, sorry, Craig LeMond. Craig LeMond was the first American to win the Tour de France and then became part of Trek's little umbrella a family of bikes a couple of years later but going back to this particular frame i just remember going to the show and like looking at this and the reps are all jazzed because you know it's their latest latest toy that they had and uh they had uh, like pieces of this to show that are raw like the individual bonded pieces which was kind of cool the bottom bracket looked like a heart you know one of those uh little fake hearts um so anyway and they were obviously trying to teach everybody the, the technique that was done. Um, but this was obviously prior to removable dropouts. But they were able to, back in the day, they were doing all the manufacturing in the States. So you can send the frame back and have it debonded, and if that's even a word, and also rebonded with a new dropout if need be. Or if a carbon tube was compromised, they can do that. Uh, they don't, I don't believe they have that service today. So this trailer looks like it's in pretty good shape. Decal's missing, but it looks like it just needs a good cleaning. So we'll keep that in mind. The brake pads are older school on this, so I'll probably get some nicer brake pads. The cart cartridge system, these are the old Altegra 600s, which is a precursor of the Altegra, or I'm sorry, Shimano 600s, and then they became Altegra. Uh, 600 was the next step down below Durace, uh, so. Altegra was not always Altegra, but Durace was. Um, Durace is one of those component trees that uh, over the decades it's been around. And uh, Campanoli's been going after it with its record. Um, SRAM has been going after it with its red model. So not to say those are not bad brands, but oh, this is interesting. The cable routing was on a little bit not correct. It's supposed to go over that bit so it probably didn't shift 
that well, or maybe there was an issue. Um, I guess we'll find that out once we go back to reassembling, but we'll uh, take a little bit closer look at that guy later. Uh, take my front wheel off. Uh, yeah, these are uh, pretty chunky, um, pretty heavy wheels, so I will probably opt to do the lighter Shimano wheel set that I have as a backup um, and save those for some other brand or entry level bike. 5200s or the Czech LCLV Postals were kind of like their second to third from top of the line. Um, they had a 5500, which was like their Durace. And then they came out with the 5900, which was like the Durace Super Light Supreme being <laughs> bike on there. So, uh, but what's cool about the Altegra componentry, the 6500 model, it is one of those componentry packages, shifters, brakes, cranks, derailers alike. They made it for about five or six years and the stuff held up so well. It, um, it's one of those things that, I mean, you can still get the used ones and it still probably would outperform any of the newer, like not all Tigger per se, but it would definitely outperform Sora, Claris, and uh, Tagra line uh, from Shimano. Plus, I like having the triple chain ring, which is kind of nice for, we have mountains here, so the hills are kind of one of those things we want to be prepared for. I'm all for keeping the front derailleur, but I know the industry is diving the other direction. Sure, they have their reasons for it, but I'm still for the front derailleur. There's still a need for it. Um, the double, the triple, these one buys. I mean, I have a mountain bike one by, and I just always feel like it's, so chunky between each shift in addition to um, the range or you just can't get that perfect gear kind of thing but that's just me so a trek oclv red white and blue of course postal uh, they really carried this they really trek really was behind this um, so much so that when lant or le mans was starting to say stuff about Lance Armstrong doping. Uh, they dropped a line in 2000, oh, what was it, 2007? Um, so even though Lance was done racing at that point or pretty close to it, uh, that's where we were at for sure. All right, let's uh, get these. I like to take the bottle mounts off. Reason being is I wanna be able to ensure that the these are clean and they're not uh, boogered up because sometimes these guys get boogered up and nothing worse than trying to put on a bottle cage and you can't where you have to take a shop to have it drilled out and a new one press fit in that kind of thing so that's what we're looking at here so i'm going to clean these guys and re-lube them when i put on there also it gives me an opportunity for all the cleaning and buffing and detailing that i do Granted, this is pretty scuffed up. I'm not gonna be able to fix the paint on, or the decaling on this, uh, but I will definitely uh, try to clean up most of the scratches. It's gonna look not brand new. I, you know, I refurbish, I don't detail, or I mean, I do de detail, I don't restore. That's the word I'm looking for, restoration. Uh, restoration is when you would match the paint and do the touch up paint and that kind of thing. I'm just, you know, for me, it's function over fashion, but I want to make it look as good as possible. And when I'm doing this initial cleaning, this is half purple power with water um, blend to kind of get the first layer of dirt. And as I'm doing this, I'm inspecting and making sure I'm not coming across any uh, compromised carbon pieces in addition to uh, chips, um, anything that might be in question here. Also, a good little note is the serial number on these guys are stamped on the dropout here. In addition to the size, which is kind of nice, so you know what size it is. So this is a 52 centimeter frame. And that is good to know when you're going to resell it and trying to fit the appropriate person <laughs> to look at that as well. So let's see if this is a diamond. Going through each tube kind of looking at it inspecting seeing if there's any kind of 
questionable damage. Um, this one was also sold at Wheat Ridge Cyclery, which is local to the Denver market. Wheat Ridge has been around for several decades too, still around today. This had some weird cable scuffage up here, but it doesn't look like it's compromised. It doesn't look like the fork is either here. So we will uh, flip it over and double check the other side. And granted, yeah, it might not be perfect paint on this or pristine, but it's definitely going to be one solid bike for somebody to get into road riding and keeping it under the $1,000 mark. To get in a full carbon bike on today's standards, you're looking at, oh, what, three grand? Four to get a decent one? And anything with Altegra componentry is going to be pretty high. We've got a little paint on there from the garage, it looks like. So, you know, using the, this kind of industrial strength will definitely clean that off a little bit easier. But you got to be careful with the paint on that uh, as well. So. So since these are bonded, you got to make sure the shifters here mounts are secure. So you don't want those popping out. Not that they had issues with them, but I've had a few of the first gen of like the bonded ones. Some of those had some questionable situations. So, so yeah, we're looking pretty good so far. So down tube, top tube, seat tube, chain stays looking good. And last but not least, we like to look underneath the bottom part, right? Make sure car racks haven't cut into the frame. Yeah, you can see some decaling missing there from a car rack. Oh, that's a bummer, but it is what it is. Seat stays look good. Um, down, seat tube looks pretty good. Okay, the, this is where the road gunk gets caught up and everything. It's a serial number sticker still intact underneath. Then the metal plate for the cable routes still there. And then we have seat stays and then we got the fork. All right. Well, I'm going to take this little plate off and I'll be cleaning that as well, which I believe it's a Torx or Allen. Uh, uh, let's see. Having a little trouble with this guy. Now oh, there we go. And I like to get all the dirt and grime. As you can see, it's seen a lot of contaminants. So, uh, well, that feels pretty smooth, the bottom bracket. I might just pull that out and clean it, knowing how dirty it is here. Um, but for, this has aluminum um, shell case in there to hold the bottom bracket. A few years later, they use carbon to you know, hold the BB, I think it's the BB30 or BB90 bearing. Um, which was quite a fiasco, but this does have the standard 30, uh, 68 shell and you can put on various bottom brackets for different cranks of today's new. So you have an uh, opportunity to, you know, upgrade this if you wanted to go to the newer componentry. Same thing with the headset being an inch and eighth. So it is definitely not outdated in that perspective. 27.2 seat tube for uh, seat posts and it has a bra you know, braze on front clamp all normal things as well as the dropout. So yeah, this is, I wouldn't say a sh super shiny diamond, but it is definitely a diamond. It will be a definitely an awesome bike for somebody to get into road riding. And uh, it has workhorse componentry with a, a wide range of gears to climb those hills and do ever, however far that rider wants to get into cycling. So it is definitely gonna be a gym, so. Let's uh, dive into this and I will show the componentry cleaned here in just a moment after this. Check it out. So here we have it. And this took an extra long time. We'll go with that in a second here, but here's the Altegra. Binder bracket's good. A little bit of rust, surface rust, but it's gonna be fine. Derailers are good. Crank set turned out to be pretty clean. We'll have to double check that metal chain ring though under pressure, see if it holds up. But other than that, we got the cassette all blown out. Shifters actually cleaned up really well and they do shift pretty good considering the age of it and how dirty they were. And I'm gonna switch out the stem to a little more of a traditional length stem instead of the super upright. 
and I decided to just keep with the A-class wheels. Uh, the set I had was actually damaged, so I decided to go with these with newer tires. So that actually turned out good. So the parts, yes, it took a little bit while to clean those, and you notice the fork is off, yeah, and I've cleaned out the, the bearings just to make sure they're all cleaned up since I had it. So that gave me an opportunity to, yep, you know it, there is just the frame itself. And back in the day, they really were proud of how much these bad boys weighed. So we're just going to grab our scale here, let that zero out, and we're gonna go ahead and just weigh the frame. So 2.6, 2.62 for a 52 centimeter for vintage. That actually is not too shabby. I'm like, whoa, check that out. It cleaned up pretty well. I mean, there's still some chips in the decaling that just, you know, just not going to be able to make that go away. But the rest of the paint came out really good and nice and clean. And that took extra long because I had to use all of my tricks up my sleeve to get this to be at this state of clean frame. And what I use is Several different Adams polishes. Well, I got a swirl, a compound, and a polish, and I have three different pads. The swirl, and then I use a little bit of 3000 sandpaper, the compound pad, and the polishing pad. I've used that up so much that I had to recharge my Dremel tool, not just once, but twice to get through this frame to be this polished and cleaned up. So let's recap and see what our final results are. Well, here we have it, you know, it's kind of fun to clean these old ones up. I wish it was in a little, in a little bit better detail, but you know, at the end of the day, it still cleaned up pretty good. Had to do some <laughs> real soul searching on parts and so forth to get this one to be close to what it was. But you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be one rock solid full carbon bike. For somebody just getting into road riding or the next step above and plus it has nine in the back and three up front that gives you a huge range of gears to climb a lot of hills monster headwinds you know bad days are all three at the same time so you got the gearing to be able to take care of you and it's also Altegra which is the next level down from the top of the line so hey not too bad and the carbon frame you know a little over two and a half pounds and the fork, it's actually not too bad in shape. It's definitely worthy upgrading if you wanted to keep the postal look and what have you. Absolutely. But this is a gym, and it has a historical piece for sure. And if anybody's out there that knows the postal bikes and that collects them, which I do have a few customers that do, this is a decent one to add to your stable. Granted, it is not the cherry thing that you might be looking for or mint condition, but hey, what the heck, for something that's pretty decent without being outrageously priced, this is something to look forward to. So yeah, absolutely. It's a diamond, still a little rough, but hey, <laughs> it's still a diamond at the end of the day. And let's just take a look at these final results of everything put back together after this.
Welcome back to Another Guy Bicycles, hanging with a guy. Hey, I'm Justin the Guy on this old bike series. So behind me, we have a classic gym. And to give it the full attention that it deserves, Welcome back to an